In 50 years of activity, Suzuki have produced 3 million outboard engines. The Japanese builder first launched onto the market with a 5.5 horsepower, 98 cubic centimeter engine. That was in 1965. Suzuki Motor Corporation main activity is automobile, as you know, and motorcycle is the second issue. And uh, motor, uh, marine business is third in the size of business. But in terms of the, let's say, image, high quality image on a high image for the high class for high class people, marine is uh, let's say the um, first important um, sector. Also in terms of the um, profitability, you know, we have some room to have make some business in this sector. As a manufacturer of the engine in total, you know, uh, this was a natural selection for us to start um, uh, for uh, outboard engines because we already have experience for the motorcycle and the automobile. And uh, we started actually 50 years ago. And this experience makes us, uh, let's say, um, ready for serving to the, our customers. This is, you know, really experience should be uh, let's say helpful uh, to help the, our customers. This is our philosophy. Suzuki was the first producer of outboard motors to use oil injection in their two-stroke engines in 1980. 1987 saw an important landmark as the United States Association of Nautical Builders awarded them the DT200 for the most innovative product. 1980 saw the electric fuel injection system used for the first time. But in the whole story of Suzuki, the most famous engine is the 9.9 .9 horsepower, which they've been producing for over 20 years. For, for us, you know, the outboard engine is used always on the water, so that's why the engine shouldn't be breaking down. This is the important thing. So always I ask the engineer to uh, make the engine never break down on the water. Otherwise, you know, our customer faces the risk. So that's why this is the most important thing for us. Suzuki was the first to launch a 300 horsepower engine onto the market, which was in 2006. And today their catalogue includes 26 models from a 2.5 horsepower to the 300 horsepower. The smallest, the 2.5 horsepower, is a very light outboard which can come with a long stemmed shaft for sailboats. The new 9.9, .9, 15, and 20 horsepowers are the most evolved and the lightest on the market. The lightest is an important characteristic of these engines, that they are often carried by hand and installed on the tender or the launch just when it's about to be used. And then there's the weight issue that's important too in terms of balance. Because when you mount an outboard that's too heavy, the front of the boat raises up and it's difficult to get it to plane. All three engines, even the 9.9 .9 has electronic fuel injection and the lean burn system the very same that was developed as a petrol saver for the big Suzuki outboards. The Suzuki 25 and the 30 have three inline cylinders and camshaft and are the lightest in their power class. Both have a 499 cubic centimetre block engine and design that minimises energy loss. For example, these are the first engines for their class with roller bearings on the equalizers of the camshaft, which greatly reduce the friction. The 40 horsepower is a robust engine. Just think, it can get up to 60 horsepower. It is the only one in its power to be equipped with a self-adjusting oil bath timing chain, i.e. it doesn't need any maintenance. The block has three cylinders and four valves, each with a twin camshaft. 
The electronics of the engine automatically reduce the consumption and the cruising speed, and the ignition, which comes with just a simple touch of a key. It is, however, an engine like many other small Suzuki's, having all the top technology. Also, you know, the technology is, let's say, easier to introduce in the bigger engine. But anyway, you know, it's coming down to the smaller engine. So always we are watching that segment, which is most, very important for us also. So we use same technology from the top model to the bottom line. This is our, you know, um, policy for that. The new 150 and 175 Suzuki units are particularly vigorous. They've got a higher cylinder capacity, in fact, almost three litres, to go just that little bit beyond for more power and torque. Distribution comes from a twin camshaft which looks after those 16 valves. The 175 horsepower comes with a variable VV phasing system too, which optimises performance at all speeds. Of course, it's got lean burn consumption that lowers the stechiometric ratio to 18 to 1. That means that there is 18 times the amount of air to petrol. The weight of the engine on the transom is determined by the axis of the boat. That's why Suzuki has planned that its balance point barry centre of the engine is the closest possible to the barry centre of the boat. How? Misaligning the crankshaft in respect to the transmission shaft. In practice, in other engines, the crankshaft is found at this point, i.e. furthest away. The DF200 is the latest offering. It's a four-cylinder developed around a big block, 2,867 cubic centimetre big block. And in respect to its competitors with six-valve cylinder, it's obviously more compact and lighter. It uses the consumption and emissions lean burn system and the robust shaft that's seen in the 250 and 300 horsepower, allowing propeller rotation to go either left or right by simply changing the electrics. The 250 and 300 horsepower engines have an advanced digitally electronic sequential injection system with lean burn. For those who want to personalize their outboard, Suzuki offers tanks by GP Design. That 15 years, um, the market still, you know, it's not big enough. Maybe, you know, uh, not everyone can enjoy the world of the Nautica. I mean, so I hope in the next 50 years, of course, we try to supply the best quality of the product. But uh, I like that people, or nearly all people, can enjoy this um, activity on the water. 50 years have gone since Suzuki built the first outboard, and today these engines are so high-tech, it would be a sin not to use them.